Good morning. Welcome to our worship this third Sunday in Lent, and today we will hear about uh, what it is that quenches our spiritual thirst, uh, the living water, Jesus, who gushes up within us unto eternal life. A couple of announcements today. Uh, it is Safe Sunday, so we are uh, taking donations today for uh, the Springfield Area Food Emergency Organization. Uh, it has been running low on funds, and uh, we're hopeful that we'll be getting some grants sometime soon. Uh, it is something that helps meet uh, the gap. Uh, food prices have gone up over 20% in the last couple years, and so it can be difficult for some families to make ends meet. Uh, we also have Lenten meals that we're serving on Wednesdays from 5.30 to 6.30, uh, and then we have our Lenten worship at 7 o'clock, uh, which is led by our confirmation students, and they have been doing a fantastic job at that. Uh, and after reviewing the results of the worship study that we did, uh, there will be no changes in the time of our worship or our Sunday school. Uh, they will remain the same. Uh, and in addition, there is no uh, Lutheran difference Bible study today. Uh, but there is coffee talk, so please stay for that. With that, we begin our worship with our gathering song from the With One Voice hymnal, page 660, I Want Jesus to Walk With Me. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. If you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes through the word of Christ.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal Lord, your kingdom has broken into our troubled world through the life, death, and resurrection of your Son. Help us to hear your word and obey it so that we become instruments of your redeeming love through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'd like to invite the choir to come up for some special music.
I'd like to invite uh, the children to come up uh, as we sing together, You Are My All in All. morning. Good. Good to see you. So I have a question for you. Take a look at this plant. It looks really sad, doesn't it? What do you think is the matter with it? What do you think, Jonah? It's dry, it's dry right? It didn't get watered. It's dying for a drink of water. Now, plants can't live without water, right? Uh, whenever it doesn't rain for a long time, you'll see plants, and maybe this last summer, did you see a lot of brown grass? Yeah, right? It was really dry. I would walk, if I walked on my grass without shoes on, it was almost like sharp and prickly, right? It didn't have enough water. And uh, without rain, the water, the rivers, and the lakes, and the underground springs will dry up. Right? And then what happens is uh, the plants also will dry up uh, and they will be dead. Now, people, can people live without water? No. Do you know how, what percentage of our bodies is water? It's about 70%, right? Uh, and uh, we can live several weeks without food, but do you know how long we can live without water before we die? close, three or four days, just three or four days, uh, and then we die. So every day we can look around and we can see people who are dying for a drink of water. Now, I don't mean the kind of water uh, that this plant needs. I'm talking about the kind of water that only Jesus can give. He gives living water, we'll hear in our gospel message today. So Jesus was, uh, went to a well one day, and there was a woman who came there, and he said to her, well, after asking her for a drink of water, and she said, oh, why are you asking me for water? He said, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that's asking you for a drink, you would ask him, and he would give you living water. Of course, Jesus wasn't talking about the kind of water that we drink, right? She thought he was, and she said, well, where are you going to get that? You don't even have a bucket. Uh, but he was talking about the water that Jesus himself can give us. He gives us the forgiveness of our sins, right? Jesus died on the cross uh, so that we could be forgiven of our sins, uh, and he comes to us in his word. Uh, and do you know where he first came to you in his word? In baptism, right? Around that uh, pool of water uh, that we have when we do baptisms, we gather around the font. Uh, and he knows the bad things that we've done, right? And Jesus comes to us in baptism uh, and again and again in his word, and he says, I forgive you. God doesn't remember it anymore. Uh, and th it's through this forgiveness that Jesus gives us 
the living water that he says will gush up within us to eternal life. Do you know what eternal life is? What's eternal life? I'm sorry? Life after death? Yeah. It's life with God forever. You actually live in it right now. Because Jesus claimed you in the waters of baptism, he marked you as his own, you now live in your eternal life, which means that God is with you. He's never going to let you go. You are going to be with God forever. Now, can you see him right now, like the woman at the well did? No, we can't see Jesus, right? But one day, we'll get to see him face to face. Uh, And until then, he quenches our thirst for him with his word that you guys come up to hear, right? He came up to hear his word so that it would quench you and you would know that Jesus is always with you. God is pleased with you for Jesus' sake. uh, And God will never let you go. He's going to hold on to you forever. Will you guys pray with me? Can we take up a position of prayer? We'll fold our hands, bow our heads, close our eyes, and you can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for our Savior Jesus. Thank you for his living water that gives us life with you forever and ever. Help us to share his message so people will know his love. Thank you for loving us. We love you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you guys for coming up. You can grab yourselves a treat as you go back to your families. first lesson is from the 17th chapter of the book of Exodus. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock, and water will come out of it, so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? We will read responsively Psalm 95. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. For you, Lord, are a great God and a great ruler, ruler above all gods. In 
The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have molded the dry land. For the Lord is our God, and we are the people of God's pasture and the sheep of God's hand. Oh, that today you would hear God's voice. Our second lesson is from the fifth chapter of the book of Romans. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For, for while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Here ends the reading. Please rise as you are able for the reading of the gospel. according to, to John, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. So Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob? who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it. Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water, gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband, and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on these, this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. 
God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then the disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, what do you want? Or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them. And he stayed there two days, and many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The gospel begins with a familiar scene for thousands of years. A woman getting the day's water. It wasn't an easy task. Haul the water pot to the well, pull up water from the well, and then haul it back home only to do it all over again the next day. It's no wonder the woman at the well was intrigued when a Jewish stranger says, whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. He seemed to be offering a way to avoid a daily chore. Like many people who encountered Jesus, she couldn't grasp the significance of his words. She came because she was thirsty but, she reveal, but Jesus revealed to her a different thirst, an aching parchedness. And it began with a simple conversation. Go, call your husband, and come here. I don't have a husband. You're right, for you've had five husbands, and the one you have now isn't your husband. We don't know this woman's story. Did her husband die? Was she divorced? Was she unfaithful? Had she been abused in her family home and now attracted abusive men? Was she used by these men and then thrown away because of lax divorce laws? We have no idea. The reasons aren't important. What's important is that she wasn't finding what she needed in marriages, or in this case, in sex outside of marriage. Her string of broken relationships shows that something wasn't right in her life. So Jesus revealed to her the true nature of the problem. She was spiritually thirsty. When you're making your way to the well and you encounter others, do you find yourself putting on a brave face? You hide your hurt with jokes. You mask your pain with booze. You bury your hatred of yourself by hurting others. You try to avoid running into anyone. Do you ever find yourself needing something but unable to put it into words? Or can you put it into words but you just can't find the answer or the help or the satisfaction you need? You are not alone. The lonely Samaritan woman had burdens in her personal life she had burdens in her soul. She had fears and uncertainties. She had a thirst that went far beyond well water. And you may have these too. It's tempting when you've been sucked dry by heartache and disappointments and you've become dried out from your past sins and mistakes to look for relief anywhere. But if you look to the wrong source of relief, you're only going to be worse off than when you started. Maybe the Samaritan woman was looking for relief in men and casual sex, but it didn't help. It only made matters worse. 
approaching what could be her sixth marriage and her life still wasn't any better. Maybe you're seeking to quench your thirst in the wrong things. You need to know that it's not going to help. It's only going to make it worse. Look at it this way. If you're floating in a lifeboat that's adrift in the middle of the ocean with the sun beating down on you, in your desperation, you might be tempted to drink just a little bit of the ocean water to soothe your thirst. A little bit can't hurt, right? But it can. Drinking the salt water will make you thirstier and thirstier, so you will drink more and more until you begin to hallucinate and eventually die. The salt water you're drinking, the things you look for in yourself or in others to satisfy you will only make your thirst worse. They can't satisfy the thirst in its true location, your soul. The great church father, St. Augustine, said, You made us for yourself, O God, and our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. The woman came to the well with a restless spirit and no clue that the tired, hungry man sitting by the well would be the one who would finally give her rest. She thinks that he doesn't know her, yet he knew her living situation and what was in her heart and soul. Jesus not only tells her she needs living water, but he points her to himself as its source. First, he tells her that he can give her what she needs. She's surprised, so she asks a legitimate question. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us the well and drank from it himself. Of course, Jesus is greater than her ancestor Jacob. He lived for an eternity before Jacob. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. He is the Christ that everyone was waiting for. The Christ whom this woman herself was looking forward to meeting is now standing before her, speaking to her. And by revealing what he knew about her life, she was led to see the reality of her sinful situation and how her true thirst can only be satiated in one way, through the living water. It's at this point the discussion takes what seems to be a strange turn. Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshiped on this mountain, you, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. It's not as strange as you might think. The woman is admitting her sins and her thirst, but she doesn't know where to go for relief. Does she worship at the Samaritan Mount Gerizim or travel to the Holy Temple in Jerusalem? She has some serious skin in the game, so she wants to be certain. But Jesus says it's neither. It's in him that she finds what she needs. She finds forgiveness, salvation, and eternal life. In him, she finds rest and refreshment for her sin-parched soul. Your thirst may be overwhelming, and your soul may be restless and longing for more. If so, let me point you to Christ, the true living water. You might not believe that Jesus knows what you're going through, but he does. You're his creation. More than that, you belong to him, and he knows your aches, your pains, your sorrows, your troubles, your sins. Do you remember when Jesus, while hanging on the cross in his dying woes, said, I thirst? The living water who satisfies your deepest spiritual thirst did so by becoming parched in your place. Your spiritual pain cracked his lips. Your sorrows filled his throat with chalk. Your emptiness drained his body of sweat. And your attempts to satisfy your thirst with salt water, shut down his internal organs and led to his death, and he did it for you. He was parched to the point of death and beyond so that when you say, I thirst, he is there for you, 
with the living water that will become in you a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. Christ Jesus is the pure, uncontaminated living water that your soul needs. Jesus first came to you and you were gathered around a pool of water at the font of your baptism. And he calls you now once again to receive his living water, which purges your guilt and gives you rest for your weary soul. Receive his living water, which washes away your painful past and the sins that gnaw at your soul. Receive his living water, which heals broken hearts and broken lives. Receive his living water, which quenches your deepest thirst now and forevermore. Christ knows your spiritual thirst, and he comes to you now in his promise. I forgive you all your sins. Christ and his living water will always be there for you. His grace, his love, his forgiveness, his help will never dry up. Now the peace which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. We believe in him and are marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. 
Look forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, let us be reconciled to God and to one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. To the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God has mercy on you. He forgives you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. He strengthens you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, he keeps you in eternal life. Amen. We will now receive our offering. Us pray. Merciful God, in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you embrace our lives with your great love for humanity. With joy and gladness, we ask that these gifts may be for many a sign of that love, and that we may continue to share in your divine life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord of hosts, you have brought us to dwell in your house and called us to worship you in spirit and truth. Receive our praise and hear our prayers that we would leave this place filled with your living water gushing up within us to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of hosts, you led your ancient people by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Lead us through the wilderness of this world by the hand of faithful pastors, that we would be refreshed by the living water flowing from the stricken side of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of hosts, you have made us righteous through Jesus Christ and made peace with us by his cross. Lead us to embrace our suffering in faith as it shapes us in his image and be prepared to behold your glory in heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of hosts, bless the nations of the world, that both citizens and authorities would seek justice, peace, and the common good of all. Protect and strengthen Kylie Graff, Shane Clement, 
Ethan Langseth, Emily Wendt, Tabor Gluth, and all those serving in the military at home and abroad. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of hosts, help the sick and suffering, especially those who desire our prayers. We lift up Arlen Kettner, Larry and Ruthie Potter, Kevin Wendt, Delora Stern, Linda Fisher, Jarrett Sharp, Marcia Schiller, Sherry Fanger, and those we name in our hearts. Surround them with your love in Christ, and according to your gracious will, heal them. Comfort all who mourn, and fill their hearts with a certain hope of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, to you all hearts are open and all sins known. Strengthen our hearts by your grace that we who daily sin much would make confession boldly and then joyfully receive your precious word of absolution. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our sending song from the With One Voice hymnal, page uh, 721, is Go My Children With My Blessing. Mm -hmm. 